Now, I wanted to talk to you also about some more climate change madness. And the latest person to embarrass themselves is child psychologist Steve Bidoff, who's written and spoken for years about raising children. He does have a bit of form for running amok on anti-conservative or woke courses, uh, causes. I, I shared a story with you two years ago when he wrote a disgraceful article looking to tarnish the names of a host of conservative politicians from Donald Trump right through to Peter Dutton, Tony Abbott and even John Howard over that shocking Las Vegas shooting massacre. Well, now he's chosen Scott Morrison and his target, as, as his target when he, over the climate change debate. Now, Biddulph's column in the Sydney Morning Herald yesterday labelled the Prime Minister a bad dad because of his attitude to global warming. He opened by saying Scott Morrison failed an entire generation last week. He dismissed the 300,000 young people and their parents who filled our city streets in the school strike for climate as lacking context and perspective. Biddulph went on to praise the kids who joined the climate strike and protested in the streets, and he focused also on Morrison's kids, saying that their dad is in charge and, cli uh, and climate inaction, despite some sharp accounting, is not remotely a prior priority for this government. We are now world pariahs on account of this, said Steve Biddulph. Now, if you're going to join the debate, let alone lecture others, you have to try to maintain some connection to fact and reality. Australia has committed to Kyoto and Paris, will meet its targets, and has spent tens of billions of dollars in order to do so, not to mention inflicting crippling power price increases on people because of these policies. Bidoff should ask some parents about their power bills. He should also tell us what other country has spent more and inflicted more economic harm on itself in order to meet climate goals. And he ought to explain just which country sees Australia as a pariah. In short, he's preaching nonsense. He's spreading fake news. But it gets worse. So let's have some context and perspective, Steve Widoff wrote. Tim Flannery, our most eminent climate scientist, said last week that on current trends, the world will this century grow too hot and the ocean's too acidic to support more than one billion lives. And since it now has seven billion and rising, well, do the math. It's not a picture I really want to flesh out, as there may be children reading this. Polar bears and coral reefs are the last of our problems. Where to start with this nonsense? First up, Flannery is not only absolutely not Australia's most eminent climate scientist, he's not even a climate scientist. Again, bit off is spruiking fake news. And yes, polar bears and coral reefs are the least of our problems. All the evidence so, shows so far shows that they are doing just fine. As for Bidoff's wild predictions, they're just so far over the top, they provide exactly the sort of fear-mongering and alarmism that Prime Minister Scott Morrison was talking about. Bidoff seemed to suggest climate change could cost six billion lives. And as if that doesn't seem nutty enough, he confirmed that thought at the end of his piece. We need to fight this war, which, thank God, does not involve killing, but saving six billion lives. This is the factless, emotive, shrill, scary fake news that not only you and I have to deal with, but which is scaring and traumatising our children. Biddulph has attacked Morrison's call for calm and rational debate based on facts, and in doing so, his loopy response has proved precisely the Prime Minister's point. I've no idea what Biddulph is like as a father or as a psychologist, but we can see from this that he is absolutely hopeless, ill-informed and dangerous as a contributor to the climate debate.